Hi, my name is John Durba, and today we're going to learn about one-footed tricks and backflips. It's always important to wear safety equipment when mountain boarding. It is at times almost more important to have an accurate understanding of what you can safely do on a mountain board than it is to wear equipment. This tutorial covers two tricks that would be classified in the advanced category. There are many fundamentals that need to be taught both on and off the board prior to doing these tricks. The backflip, in my experience, is a trick that everyone wants to see, but isn't the most technical or impressive trick that a rider can perform. If you don't feel comfortable doing this trick, I will tell you not to do it. The risks of doing a backflip greatly outweigh the benefits, and any first-time rider should spend a few days mentally preparing for this trick. Please note that if you fail the backflip attempt, it could easily result in neck injury, causing paralyzation or nerve damage, or in many circumstances, death. Know the risks. I'm going to cover a few basics of doing front-footed one-footers. Before we start, I want you, the viewer, to understand that there are many fundamentals that you need to know before trying these tricks. You can watch the binding tutorial on youtube.com slash jderba to get a greater understanding of how bindings work and how to do a basic jump since I have not done any involved tutorials on jumping. I am putting on a shin guard because when doing one footed tricks it is very easy to hit your shin off the edge of the board when you land wrong or when the board bounces up and hits you in the leg. Adjust the back binding to fit properly and loosen the front binding to allow your foot to slide in and out of the binding more easily. Having a looser binding will cause added stress and strain to the ladder strap of the binding. You will need to keep an eye on the wear and tear of that part. If you think that the ladder is not performing up to spec, visit mbs.com for a replacement. Point your front foot forward and down to exit the binding. To re-enter, scoop up the binding with your toes pointed up and then lock your foot in place as the board comes to the ground. Practice on a soft, flat area such as grass before you add any speed or obstacles. To help build your technique, you can land with the front foot beside the front binding when you first start a trick. But it is important to land with your foot inside the binding as you progress the trick because as you go bigger and faster, you will need the support of the binding for balance. Grabs and extensions can come sooner or later depending on your technique and goals, but for now we are going to start on flat ground with moderate speed. When jumping out of the binding, both the front and back foot help to keep the board level. The front foot will help to get the board off the ground and then exit the binding. The back foot will aid in moving the board toward the front foot for re-entry, as well as keeping it level. Timing is everything with this trick and it will take some practice before it can be done over obstacles. A no comply will work the same as a one footed ollie, but it will rely 100% on the strength of your back foot. Your back foot will twist up and towards you lifting the nose of the board from the ground. You can almost extend the board in front of you and then bring it back with a twist of the ankle. Without a heel strap, the only option for a no comply 180 or ollie 180 is a rotation to the heel side of the board. Adding the heel strap will give you more control and freedom to rotate either direction. With or without a heel strap, work on your ankle strength and flexibility so you can avoid injury. Step off the board and swing it around by lifting and twisting with the back foot. This trick may take some practice, but it can lead to flat ground ollie one footed 180s. This trick is done with a combination of the front and back foot and requires a consistent 180. You can start by landing beside the binding, and then try to work towards landing in the binding. Adding a ramp to the mix can work out well if the ramp is designed correctly. This ramp has an extra long top creating an entire board length several feet before the lip, allowing for greater consistency. Aside from ramp length, height and slope are also very important. If the ramp is too mellow or short, it will be difficult for a beginner to add grabs to their one-footed tricks. But if the ramp is too tall, it might stall out your trick, and if the radius cut is too steep, creating too much of a lip, a rider could get injured when doing spin tricks. Just ask AJ Lawson. Overall, the ramp should be something that you feel comfortable with and are willing to try new tricks on. When you start doing one-footed tricks off jumps, keep in mind how much hang time you have and how the lip of the jump affects the board. As you progress on the jump, work on increasing your level of awesomeness by extending your front foot further and further until the ladies ask for your number. Once you have given out the numbers, you can move to larger jumps and add grabs, or okay. unsuccessfully land a one-footed 360 off a one-and-a-half-foot jump after one try. Let's move on to backflips, and what not to do. I'm not here to tell you how to do a backflip because I don't want to deal with the liability of you getting hurt, but I will give you some important pointers from my experience. I don't want to say names or pull videos because it may embarrass people, but I see a lot of backflips that scare the crap out of me. People who go off the jump and nail their head off the lip definitely are doing something wrong. A key concept to keep in mind is centrifugal force. 
If I am spinning, I can extend my arms or legs to slow down or pull them in to speed up. This video demonstrates how that works. Now, if I add 20 pounds, about the same as a mountain board, you can see that the weight can stall my rotation or put me back in motion. It is important to understand how this concept applies to mountain boarding and backflips. If you can't extend your legs or arms and over rotate, you will get hurt. I'm not saying don't do laid out backflips because I'm all for them, but know what you're doing and in most circumstances riders who lay out know how much of a rotation to throw or they'll under rotate and then tuck at the end to get the rotation around. Also, when beginning the trick, jump perpendicular or at a right angle from the ramp. Don't throw yourself backwards because that'll lead to go. head injury. If you're going to reach for the board and do a grab, keep in mind how your body position will affect the speed of the rotation and remember that you were there to do a backflip. So backflip first, grab second. Always remember that or else you'll stall the rotation and get hurt. I hope this video is informational for you. Leave your comments at www.youtube.com slash jderba or email me at derbaj at johnderba.us if you want to chat or get a transcript of what I wrote for translation.